In this video, we're going to introduce you to the engine lathe. The major parts of the engine lathe are the headstock, the tailstock, the carriage, and the bed. To turn on the lathe, you must first turn on the power here. Select the speed. This one you can adjust your speed through these speed control knobs. So if you have a clutch lever on either side, that turns it on. You also have a brake that stops it. Nearly all of the lathes in our shop have a foot brake. You'll notice that this clutch lever is on the right hand side too, and the brake stops it. Parts of the lathe include the headstock, the carriage, the tailstock, the bed, and the ways. Also, the chip pan and the brake. The headstock consists of the spindle and chuck, the speed control panel, the feed control panel. In the speed control panel, you have levers to change the RPM of the lathe. This particular lathe, looking at the chart, you can see that it can run as slow as 37 RPM or as rapid as 1500 RPM by moving the levers to the appropriate position. This lathe is set up with the lever in L and B and the speed selector fully to the right meaning it will run at 54 RPM. Also on the speed selection panel you have the feed direction change lever and the oil indicator. Directly below the speed selection panel is the feed selection chart. Much like the speed selection panel, you can choose from this chart the appropriate feed you wish to use. You can cut as few as four threads per inch or as fine a thread as 56 threads per inch. Also, you can cut fine a feed as two thousandths per revolution or as rapid as 37 thousandths per revolution. You can also choose between millimeters or inch movement. Directly below the feed selection chart is the feed selection panel. You have the feed gear and gauge lever which you will disengage before changing the speeds. You have one lever that can choose between 1 and 10. The knob in front of the feed selector has four positions L, T, S, and H and the top feed selector knob has positions for one or two. Just below that feed selector knob you have a selector whether you wish to cut threads or feed using the engagement lever there. The carriage consists of a carriage hand wheel which is the larger wheel on the lathe to move it along the Z axis. The top of the carriage is known as the saddle. On the saddle is positioned the cross slide with a graduated cross slide handle, also the compound rest with its hand wheel that is graduated, and topping all of it off, the tool holder. The front of the carriage is known as the apron. On the apron you will find the feed and gauge lever, 
the feed direction lever, also the half nut lever for when you are cutting threads. To the right of the carriage you have the clutch lever and running along the length of the lathe is the feed rod and the lead screw. On top of the compound rest you'll find the tool holder and at the bottom you will find a protractor base that allows you to cut tapers, chamfers, and threads. Each of the lathes is equipped with a cart. In the drawer of this cart you will find your live center, your Jacob's chuck, a knurling tool, a cutoff tool, two tool holders, and at least one boring tool holder, as well as the T-handle for your chuck, your Allen key for your tool for locking your tools in place, and any other specific tools useful on that lathe. I do not want you to move these tools anywhere else. They remain in the drawers for the specific lathes. Also in each lathe cart you will find a dead center and a collar to fit. This particular lathe also has some various gears to change your uh, threads as well as the 21 millimeter wrench that you'll need for adjusting the taper attachment. The tailstock is equipped with a number four Morse taper on this machine. So to insert the Jacobs chuck there's a tang on the end, as you can see this, a tang, and it has to fit within the groove, so you give it a little spin until it drops, you feel it. Once you have that, slide it out, give it a pop. That's good and solid. Now, in the each, end of each of these Jacobs Chuck, you'll notice I have inserted the Chuck key. That's the way I like them kept to remove just until it you back off on the tailstock until you feel it solid and you give it a quick jerk that will release that same thing for the live center this is a live center because it has the center moves on a bearing once again it's got a number four Morse taper Get it close, give it a pop, a good solid strike into that taper. To remove it, you back it off until you feel the resistance and give it a little quick jerk. That will release it and bring your tailstock forward. 